Hi everyone, Jimmy here. First of all, we noticed this morning that there was no red wave. I had listened, actually listened to some of the quote unquote prophets early in the week as they were talking about the blood moon signifying a red wave. Well, the blood moon didn't signify a red wave. It never was meant to signify a red wave. And we didn't get a red wave. And I don't know about you, but I'm totally not anxious whatsoever about it. We are so close to the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ, our blessed hope, the, the Lord returning. And yeah, they're, they're going to start immediately commenting on this post, as they do every week. You don't see it because I nix them, I cut them off, but calling the pre-tribulation rapture a lie, calling the, calling it uh, every every <laughs> deception. And, and uh, by the way, I'm not saved, and I'm going to hell for preaching the pre-tribulation rapture. All of that stuff is happening in uh, at this point, I don't care. I don't care what anybody says. My heart tells me Jesus is at the door. He's been at the door for quite a while, but go time is up approaching so very, very quickly. But um, I'm going to talk about no red wave. I just did that. So check that off the list. There's no red wave. If your trust has been in politics, is your if your trust has been a resurgence of conservatism in the United States of America, if your trust has been in former candidates or former presidents rising again to become the saviors again of the United States of America, your your hope and your trust is misplaced. I'm just telling you, it's misplaced. This thing is so far gone. This thing is so far gone. I, I'm not trying to be a naysayer. I'm just trying to tell you as a believer in Jesus Christ, it is time to remove your trust from every other location, every other thing, every other person, and put your trust fully on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's all across the word of God. Trust in the Lord. Trust the Lord. Now's the time to trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. We're going to talk a little bit about the universal the the 10 universal commandments that will be presented in in a repentative prayer to the earth on top of mount sinai so and it's fake mount sinai so i call it fake 10 commandments by fake religious leaders on fake mount sinai in order to bring about a fake christ there i said it and we're talking a little bit about the rapture of the church father help us today as we Look at these things to understand the time that we're living in and that you meant for us to know in Jesus' name. Okay. One of the arguments that has come my way, which is really kind of a funny argument, but it's uh, the misquotation of a verse. And I'm going to read two verses here. Actually, I'm actually going to read three verses. Acts chapter 1, verses 6 through 8. It's very interesting how this argument has come about, or this reasoning has come about, that we cannot know the day or the hour, that we cannot know the time, we can't know the season even, that it doesn't do any good to look at the, uh, the, the events in our world to try to determine when Jesus might or might not come back. And so, it's, it's a fascinating argument built to keep your head in the sand, in, in my, in my uh, probably not very humble opinion. Verse 6, therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? That was their hope. That was their their desire was that Messiah would come and would rescue Israel, return Israel to its position as, in their minds, the true kingdom of the world. And Israel was never meant to be the true kingdom of the world. Israel was meant to convey God's glory, and they failed miserably. But God brought his glory about anyway, as he promised through Israel by bringing Messiah. And then Israel became the seed, if you were, if you will, for the birth of the church. It was right there in Jerusalem. And he's going to reference that right now. But that was their hope that 
a political change would happen through the miracles and the power of Messiah. In fact, that he had risen from the dead should prove that he's going to politically take over and remove the Roman Empire. Well, they were still misguided. They still did not fully understand. And that wouldn't come for years. It wouldn't, the full understanding would not come for years. But here's what Jesus said. Verse seven, he said to them, it is not, and here's the argument. This is a good one. It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put into his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all of Judea, and Samaria, to the uttermost parts of the earth. And so that argument was, you see, it says right there, you know, we're, we're, we're believers in Jesus Christ. We're not to know the times and seasons. That, that is not what it's saying. They are asking him, are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel, the kingdom to Israel at this time? So there's a time frame. There is a moment. And Jesus says, it is not for you to know huh? times or seasons which the father has put into his own hand. So he's not telling them they're not going to know times or season. It's not for them to know. What does that word know? That word, that word in, in the Greek is gononi, which comes from gonosko. Gononi means this. It means to recognize, to perceive, to become aware of, to see, or to be intimate with. In other words, they are not... It's not for you to become intimate with the times and the seasons that the Lord has put into his own hands, but you will receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you'll be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, all Judea and Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth, to the ends of the earth. And so Jesus is telling them, he's telling his group of guys right here, his folks, his people, after his resurrection, he's telling them, you're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You're going to become witnesses. You're going to be the witnesses unto me. You're going to bring the gospel to the world. It's not for you to become intimate with, to be aware of as if they're happening now, the times and the seasons that the Father has put into his own hands, to his own authority. What does it mean for us? It, it means exactly what it says for this first generation, for this group of disciples right here. They were not going to know. It wasn't for them to perceive that the time was then. Because it wasn't going to be then. No matter what some YouTubers talk about saying that the Lord could have put this all, you know, the Daniel's 70th week could have been right away, but um, no, it, they rejected, the Jews rejected. No. Jesus knew already, Jesus knew that it wasn't going to be for them. It wasn't until John that the revelation took place. He had the revelation of Jesus Christ. <laughs> he did. And so that wasn't, he was the last one. He was the last one. I had another commenter say, we're all going to be persecuted. We have to be persecuted. We have to go through tribulation. There's no such thing as a pre-tribulation tribulation rapture because the apostles all had to go through tribulation. So we have to go through tribulation. Who are we? And they all died for Jesus. And so we might, we'll probably all have to die for <sighs> These apostles would not become intimate with the time and the season that the Lord had put into his own authority. But Jesus tells us all the way through, and the apostles tell us in their writings, Paul, Peter, John, all of them, over and over and over again, don't be caught unawares. We would not be unaware because we're people of the light. We're children of the light. This will not catch us like a thief. Why? Because we would know the time and the season. 
It was just the apostles that were, would not become intimate with as if it were happening to them. They would not be intimate. They would not perceive that time as being their own time. They would live out their lives. Some would die. Most would die for Jesus. All, all would die in Christ, but some would be put to death. And John would be the only one that died the natural death. And yes, he went through great persecution as well. But John, of course, was the symbol of the last church. He was the typology of the very last church that even going through suffering, they would be delivered and we will be delivered. So that's what that meant. So you, you, have, you have a misguided attempt in people's minds to write off the current events. One of the major current events is the COP27 that is taking place right now. It began on the, began on the 6th in Sharm el-Sheikh, Egypt, and it is a conference built on saving the planet and quite literally having a new, it's almost the same words as the Great Reset, a new vision for humanity when it comes to preserving and saving the earth. Within that comes a, um, another event within COP27, and that will be the climbing, <laughs> the ascending of the fake Mount Sinai. It's the wrong Mount Sinai. It's the Mount Sinai in the Sinai Peninsula, which was traditionally thought to be Mount Sinai, where the Ten Commandments were given to Moses. But we know now that that is not Mount Sinai, that Mount Sinai is actually in the um, Arabian desert, not Sinai, in the Arabian desert. And that was the true Mount Sinai. They can't climb that mountain. It's got a fence around it. It's guarded. Saudi Arabia won't let anybody get go there anyway, but they're climbing the wrong Mount Sinai. So let's call it the fake Mount Sinai. It's by all of the religious leaders in the world. I, I don't think there will be very many uh, true believing evangelical Bible believing Christians or Christian leaders that are involved in this. If there are, then I suspect that they are not true. So these are the fake world religious leaders. They're fake. They're fake religions, starting with the fake, the fakest of the fake. I'll go no further with that thought. And they're going to climb the fake Mount Sinai, and they are going to pray to a fake God. They're going to pray to the earth, a prayer of repentance, and they're going to present the 10 universal commandments of climate justice. So 10 fake commandments. So you have fake religious, fake religious leaders climbing a fake mountain, praying to a fake God, bringing a fake Ten Commandments. To bring about a fake Christ, another Christ, an antichrist, because this religious beast will give power to the antichrist. What's the sequence of events, events in the book of Revelation chapter 13? First of all is the rise of the beast kingdom out of the sea. Okay, this is the beast kingdom. We see that beast kingdom trying to rise, but it can't rise and because the restrainer is here. It's like the restraining power of the Holy Spirit through the church of Jesus Christ is still keeping a foot on that beast, keeping it under the water. The water signifies peoples, but it also signifies death. So the seas, the waters, the peoples, and the final death terrible time of death that is coming is still being kept under the water it's still being held down by a restrainer the restrainer will be removed second thessalonians chapter two the restrainer will be removed that beast will rise to its fullness then rises another beast out of the earth and it's this religious system that is now right now before our very eyes being created with a fake, fake, everything is fake, false, if you want to say it, false, that system will arise, on the first beast, there are seven heads and ten horns, 
one horn will rise up amidst those horns and overcome three of those horns and take control of the entire beast. And he becomes the beast personified. We know him as the Antichrist. For him to do that, he has to be empowered by the second beast who gives him power to work miracles and signs and all kinds of lying wonders. And he will become the boastful one, according to uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. He will be the one who speaks with great boastfulness. Same with Daniel chapter 7 and Daniel chapter 11, talking about this one that would speak blasphemies against God and set himself up as Messiah. He set himself up as God himself. And according to Daniel 9, cha chapter 9, verse 27, he himself will set up an abomination that causes desolation. The temple, the rebuilt temple, will be made desolate by the abomination that he sets up. An idol will be set up. An idol to himself will be set up in the temple. Jesus said, uh, I'm warning you about that. The, let the reader beware. Matthew chapter 24. Beware of what Daniel spoke about actually happening. Run to the hills. So they have, you have a false, fake group of religious leaders. The world religions are fake and false. Jesus is our only savior. He is the only one who died for your sins. He's the only one who rose again from the dead. He's the only one who ascended to the father. He's the only one who is making intercession for you. He's the only one whose blood uh, covers sins. He's the only one who will rule and reign. He's the only king of kings and the only Lord of lords. He's the only one. Everything else is fake. And so fake, fake, false, 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 all the way up. And it's to bring about the rise of the kingdom's these beast kingdoms, religious and secular, and we see it happening. Okay, so I'm going to do a share screen with you here, and so bear with me as I do the little click-throughs. Here we go. This is, um, this is, uh, expand that up here. Okay. In Sinai, a prophetic call, prophetic call for climate justice and ceremony of repentance. Okay, this will be happening on the 13th, amazingly enough, the 13th of November during the COP27 climate summit in the Sinai Peninsula. Here's what it says, religious communities and religious leaders have a key role to play in addressing climate change and climate justice, which requires deep transformation within society. So their idea here is to transform society. The idea of the Great Reset is to transform the economies of the world, to transform society. It's basically the same transformation. The knowledge of what changes are critically needed to diminish long-term harm to the planet is readily available. It's all fake. However, bringing about change in action, listen to this, deeper changes in attitude, a change of heart, this has been the domain of religions, plural, religions for millennia. Religions are sources of inspiration for the transformation of heart and the ensuing changes of attitude. So the religions, the fake religion, there is only one, there is only one way to have a change of heart, and that is being born again through believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only way. So everything else is fake. Hmm. To support challenge and inspire discussions during COP27 at Sharm el-Sheikh, interfaith climate events will take place in Sharm el-Sheikh, London, Jerusalem, and elsewhere that will be heart-stirring and transformative and a moment of inspiration for religious communities and for humanity. Religious leaders will call for a re-examination of deep-seated attitudes and for identifying ways to transform these attitudes for the well-being of earth, not for the purposes of God, but for the well-being of earth, our common home. Mount Sinai is a mountain whose memory and meaning loom large as a place of revelation in the collective consciousness of Christianity, Judaism, Islam, and others. So it's fake mountain, fake revelation fake religion. Hmm. No, I'm going to skip here because this makes me want to... Uh, 
We come to Mount Sinai in a movement of repentance and quest. We seek a new vision for humanity and its endangered existence, and we seek to receive and amplify a message of life-sustaining living and habits that humanity needs to hear today. In this spirit, the project partners will bring together premier religious leaders from the world's major religions to put forth a prophetic interreligious call to action, to action, 10 universal principles for climate justice. Now, there are other places you can read more about November 13th as being that day. It's not in here. But then comes the agenda for the Interfaith Center for Sustainable Development coming together on the 14th of November through the 16th of November in Jerusalem of all places. And um, they will have a series of speeches on how to do certain things. First of all, faith leaders share 10 universal principles. So they'll present the 10 commandments on the 14th. Then on the 15th, Religious, religious figures share concrete steps for climate action within faith communities. In other words, how to get our faith communities on board. Uh, the speakers are a wide range of speakers and religious leadership. Then on the 16th, bringing religion to bear on the climate emergency. Huh. And so it's all about bringing religions to bear in climate emergency. It's all about changing society. It's not about bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. It's about joining our fake religions together to save the earth and take control, take control religiously of the hearts and minds of men, which is what religion does, especially fake religion, reaches out and brings in bondage into bondage. Only Jesus sets free into liberty. So that's happening this week. You have no red wave, so no hope in politics. And lest you get too excited about Benjamin Netanyahu being prime minister, understand that Israel is still in darkness. And it will remain in darkness until it calls out Baruch Habab Hashem Adonai until it calls out to the Lord and recognizes Jesus as the one that they crucified, they pierced and mourn, and then only a remnant will be saved. Benjamin Netanyahu is not the hope of Israel. Jesus is the hope of Israel. I know that bursts a lot of people bu people's bubble, but please, this is a uh, thing about trusting in Jesus Christ. So you have a blood moon that did not signify a red wave, but I believe signified the warning, the final warning. There's no other blood moon until 2025. This thing can't go on until 2025. So that means this last blood moon is a warning. We're coming into the week of, we are in the COP27 week. We're in the week traditionally when the flood anniversary of the flood is celebrated. The calendar's off, then that's still a month away. But still, if the calendar is off by a month, as some say, and now I'm beginning to wonder, and I'm not afraid to admit when I'm possibly wrong, I still haven't decided whether I was wrong or not. But if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. If the triad, the, um, the blood moons, that have landed on Passover and Sukkot, Passover, Sukkot, Passover, Sukkot. And this being the final one, if that landed on May 16th and on November 8th, then we were a month off. And the final two blood moons were to correct the calendar for all who are actually watching. And if that's the truth, that's the truth. I'm, I'm looking at it. This blood moon means something. And if that's the truth, if that's the truth, then that blood moon signified the start of Sukkot. And that Sukkot will go seven days and then to an eighth day. Seven days to an eighth day, Shemini Atzeret being the day of new beginnings, signifying eternity. If that's the case, then we're just now starting Sukkot. 
I'm still trying to study it to get confirmation in my own heart. I'm not shutting anything down either way. If it's not a month off, then this is the week of the anniversary of the flood. And still we're in this moment where they're going to climb Mount Sinai. Fake religious leaders climbing fake Mount Sinai with a fake Ten Commandments, praying to a fake God in order to bring about a fake Antichrist. When you see all of these things taking place, look up. Your redemption is drawing close. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. As it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. This world is in its normal mode, not looking for Jesus at all. A good portion of the quote-unquote church is in its normal mode, not looking for Jesus at all. But we see all these things taking place. We're looking up because our redemption is drawing nigh. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Wow. And the Lord himself shall descend. Verse 16. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. And we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. So I encourage you, look up. Trust the Lord. Don't be dismayed. It is what it is. We are where we are. The time is now. It's up. Time's up. Come to Jesus if you haven't come to Jesus. Believe on him now. Believe on him now. This could be the, oh, the, the, the climbing on board the ark and seven-day warning. I don't know. It could be. It could be a seven-day warning that's simultaneous with what's happening in the world now. I don't know. I'm, I'm just saying. Today's the day of salvation. Today is really, it's really a good idea to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, to have a true heart change that comes from the Lord himself. Look to him, not to yourself, not to your own works. It's by grace that you're saved through faith. And that not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, so that no one can boast. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. In fact, I'm going to read one more verse. I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to, I'm going to look this up. I'm going to read this, Psalm 37. Do not fret because of evildoers. Yeah, the red wave didn't happen. The country is proving itself to have turned away from God. The majority. The majority rules in this country. Turned away from God. It's quite obvious. Nor be envious of the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb trust in the lord and do good dwell on the land and feed on his faithfulness delight yourself also in the lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart the desires of my heart and your heart should not be in in a red wave it didn't happen our hearts shouldn't have the desire we shouldn't be so desirous and so anxious about things happening our desires right now really need to be in the lord to see him and he'll grant that desire he's going to grant that desire he will so trust in the lord let's do it we can do this let's trust in the lord do you hear i'm gonna say one more time you got fake religious leaders climbing a fake mountain with fake Ten Commandments to pray to a fake God so they can bring about a fake Christ. Look to the Lord Jesus Christ now, and you will not be put to shame. Amen? Amen. Love you all.